It's not often that you run into a game that can change your opinion of an entire genre of games. I remember the first time I ever saw any gameplay of Chrono Trigger. I was at a friend's house and his older brother who was into RPGs was playing the game. He was on the Xenon Bridge battle where you fight Zombor. For some reason the look of the game and the gameplay really drew me in, and before even bothering to rent it, I ran out the next day and bought the game in a genre I knew I disliked. Prior to playing Chrono Trigger, I had rented and played a few RPG games like Breath of Fire and Final Fantasy VI, but I could never seem to get into them. I found random battles annoying, and I wanted full control of my characters, like in games like Secret of Mana or Illusion of Gaia, which were some of the first RPG-type games to grab my attention towards the genre. Chrono Trigger captivated my imagination as to what a game could be after I played it. After playing this game for the next decade, I almost spent all my time playing RPGs and pretty much completely ignoring all other genres. My love for the RPG genre can be all traced back to one game that started it all, Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger was originally released for the Super Nintendo in North America on August 22nd of 1995. The game was both developed and published by Squaresoft. Chrono Trigger was the first game in North America that Squaresoft published after its release of Final Fantasy VI, which came out 10 months prior. Having such large shoes to fill after the release of Final Fantasy VI, Square established a development team they dubbed the Dream Team. This team would include Hironobu Sakaguchi, who created the Final Fantasy series, Yuji Horii, who created the Dragon Quest series, and Akira Toriyama, the manga artist who created Dragon Ball. Along with this Dream Team, Masato Kato wrote the plot for the majority of the game. The development talents that were used on this game shine, leading to one of the greatest games ever made. Chrono Trigger was originally intended to be developed under the Seiken Densetsu franchise. However, during development, the original plan was to release it for the planned Super Nintendo disk drive. However, Nintendo cancelled the disk drive project. The game would be reoriented for the Super Famicom, and during this process, it was reoriented into Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger's plot focuses on time travel. If you were to really dumb down the plot, it's like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure meets Dragon Ball Z. It's like Bill and Ted in the sense that you go from various points of history and collect friends to help you, and it's like Dragon Ball Z or many other animes where the protagonist has to save the world by going on an epic journey. Just to give an idea of what the plot's about with minimal spoilers of the first few hours of the game, the game starts out with the now JRPG trope of being woken up by your mother to go to the opening day of the Millennial Fair, where your friend Luca is demonstrating her teleporter invention. At the fair, you run into a girl named Meryl who asks you to show her around the fair. Once the teleporter demo is ready, it malfunctions, opening a warp portal which sucks Meryl in. Chrono follows her in and shortly realizes he's been teleported to the Middle Ages. After a series of events that forces Chrono, Luca, and Meryl into an unknown portal, which teleports them to the future, in the future they learn of an evil being in the middle of the planet named Lavos, which would rise from the ground and destroy the world in the year 1999. From here it's up to Chrono and his friends to save the world by defeating Lavos through their ability to time travel. The characters in each of the time periods that you meet are one of the game's greatest strengths, and when you have to leave one of them out of your three-man party, it's actually kind of a bummer because it'd be nice to have everyone along for the ride. The backstory to each of the characters you meet in each of the various time periods is great, and helps keep you invested in the plot from a character-driven standpoint. Although admittedly, the main character Chrono is somewhat boring compared to the other characters because he's a silent protagonist. The game's plot is succinct, understandable, and interesting. Unlike many other later Square games, Chrono Trigger's plot doesn't fall apart the further you get into the game. Instead, it continues to keep you interested the entire time you're playing it. The plot flows in an amazing way, ensuring that you'll almost always know where you're supposed to go, making player's guides somewhat unnecessary unless you're trying to see all the game's multiple endings. I've heard from many people that they shy away from this game due to the 13 multiple endings, and it's a little silly as only one of the endings is the truly proper one. The rest of the endings only really depend on when you choose to fight Lavos, which can be done at multiple parts of the games. Attempting to see all the endings can be easily done by playing the game a second time through on New Game Plus mode, which is unlocked after the first time you beat the game. Doing this does add a little replay value to an otherwise plot-driven game that normally might not give you a reason to play through it a second time. Chrono Trigger is often remembered for having so many endings because prior to this game coming out, while many games did have multiple endings, they usually didn't have endings that were so different and on such a large scale by comparison. The game looks very similar to many games of the era, but there's some nice overhauls to Square's formula that you'll quickly notice. For instance, in Final Fantasy VI, you're always locked to a grid, so when you move in any direction, you'll move along this invisible grid. Here you're able to move completely freely in the game and in the overworld. This improves the way the game handles greatly. As the short synopsis of the plot suggests, the game takes place in multiple time periods, and many of the quests you do will have you visiting multiple time periods in order to accomplish a task. For instance, in order to fix a sword from the Middle Ages, a man must repair it in present time, but in order to do that, you have to get a mineral to smelt down from cavemen in prehistory. Time travel is easily one of the finest points of the game, and it keeps the plot amazingly interesting throughout the entire game. Chrono Trigger also completely does away with any type of random battle system, which was extremely common in RPGs prior to its release. 
Most of the time, you can either see enemies on the screen so you can attempt to avoid them, or by walking over certain parts of the map, you'll trigger a battle. Another unique feature of the battles is that it's done in the same area you walk around in, so you don't forget where you are or where you'll be going. This makes the scale of the world feel really good. Chrono Trigger, like many of Square's previous RPGs, uses an active time battle system for battles, which has been overhauled into Active Time Battle 2.0. This is mainly influenced by Chrono Trigger's tech system, which replaces magic which is seen in many other RPGs. Once a character's ATB bar fills up, you're able to use that character. However, because of the tech system, you're able to switch between any character that's ready to use. So this allows you to do double and triple techs. Double and triple techs take the tech abilities from two characters or three characters and combines them into one stronger one. The battle mode also uses minimal use of spacing, meaning some tech abilities will attack enemies in a row or within an area. This adds some fun strategy into which tech abilities you can use in certain situations, however, in the latter part of the game, these mechanics are used way less than they are in the early parts of the game. The game handles great and feels a lot less blocky than many of the other RPGs on the Super Nintendo. The multi-tech system makes the battle mode incredibly unique, as no other RPG quite has a system like this one. The fantastic gameplay linked with the fantastic plot makes for a really great package, but it gets even better. Chrono Trigger's soundtrack was mostly composed by Yatsunori Mitsuda, with a few tracks composed by Nobu Uematsu. The soundtrack is amazingly long and diverse, with 64 tracks on it. The soundtrack is among the best on the Super Nintendo and is easily one of the best soundtracks in a game of all time. Each track handles the mood of what's happening perfectly. The musical range the soundtrack gets from its two composers is great. Yasunori Mitsuda's contributions to the soundtrack have much more of a jazzy vibe to them when compared to the more classically traditional tracks that Nobu Uematsu wrote. Mitsuda also experiments with more synthesizer-heavy synths, as well as having a stronger emphasis on horns. Each composer does an amazing job on all the songs they compose. The game also features unique theme music for every main character of the game and some of the side ones, and all these tracks are great. Just like with Final Fantasy VI, there have been multiple releases of Chrono Trigger's soundtrack performed by orchestras, remixers, and jazz bands. One of the most notable arranged versions of the soundtrack is Chrono Trigger Brink of Time, which is an acid jazz interpretation of the soundtrack that I find to be my favorite arranged soundtrack. Graphically, Chrono Trigger pushes the limits of the Super Nintendo. Every single sprite in the game looks great. When looking at a sprite board for this game, every single main character has a shockingly large amount of sprites to make their movement smooth and each character seem lively. The enemy sprites also have a surprisingly huge amount of movement and expression to them. Although with some enemies, you'll just see a color palette swap, but given how many drastically different characters there are to talk to and the range of enemies, it's totally forgivable. The environments are on par with their sprites and being absolutely amazing as well. The environments are always super crisp and look great. Each time period has its own sort of colors and feel to them, which makes time travel that much funner. Between the overworld map and the map when exploring areas, the game handles scale in a way that isn't often seen in minigames. When in a dungeon or town, your sprite will be much larger than it is on the overworld map, giving the impression of how large the world really is. The art design for this game is incredible. If you like the way Dragon Ball looks, then you'll like this. In the official player's guide for the game, there's a ton of concept art for the game, and the drawings from Akira Toriyama look like the characters could belong in any episode of Dragon Ball. For instance, Meryl is pretty much Bulma with different hair, and Chrono is pretty much Gohan with Goku's hair. I personally think it's pretty cool, but if you're not into Akira Toriyama's art style, it could be a turnoff. Regardless, the concept art was translated into pixel art really well. After the game's release on Super Nintendo, there have been several ports of the game released. The first of which is on the original PlayStation that came out in North America in June of 2001. This port was packaged in the Final Fantasy Chronicles set, which was sold alongside Final Fantasy IV, previously known as Final Fantasy II in the States. As with other Final Fantasy ports for the PlayStation, the game suffers from massive load times at the beginning and end of each battle. It actually feels even more awkward on Chrono Trigger than it does with the random battles in the Final Fantasy series, because all the battles appear on the same screen, it just pauses the game for about 6 seconds before the ATB bar appears. One of the major upsides of the PlayStation version of Chrono Trigger is that many of the scenes now have fully animated cutscenes that are pretty cool. There's way more of them here than in Final Fantasy VI, where they only appear at the end and beginning of the game with new FMV scenes. Overall, I wouldn't really recommend the PlayStation release of Chrono Trigger over the Super Nintendo one. The added in cutscenes are pretty cool, and it might be what tips you over to this version. That or the massive price difference between the Super Nintendo and PlayStation versions. Final Fantasy Chronicles, which is what Chrono Trigger comes in, according to PriceCharting.com is about $19 with its case, whereas the SNES version of Chrono Trigger is currently $104 loose, and is probably expected to go up as the years go by. 
Seven years after the PlayStation release of Chrono Trigger, a Nintendo DS port was released on July 2nd of 2008. This version of the game features a new and more accurate translation of the original game. The game also lets you choose which screen you'd like to use so you can play using the traditional SNES controls or new enhanced touch controls for the DS. This rework of the game also includes two new areas as well as an ending that ties in the events of Chrono Cross, the sequel to Chrono Trigger. According to PriceCharting.com, the price for Chrono Trigger DS is currently $21, which seems like a totally fair price for what you're getting. This is probably the most affordable choice that includes quality gameplay without the load times. In 2011, the game saw mobile releases on various platforms. This version of the game was based on the Nintendo DS version with graphics that are compatible with iOS. When I first got my iPhone 5S, I got this game the same day and it had some pretty massive graphical glitches, which made the gameplay pretty lousy. I can say at some point they did an update where the graphics look fine now, but it's probably the worst way to play the game without any real buttons. Overall, Chrono Trigger is a masterpiece. The game is about as close to perfect as you're going to get with its amazing plot, amazing gameplay, amazing soundtrack, and amazing graphics. Not a single thing about this game playing it in 2015 feels aged other than the graphics, which still hold up better than almost anything from its era, and honestly, it looks better than a lot of sprite-inspired indie games we see today. Honestly, the only real downside to this game is that it spoils you. After playing Chrono Trigger, you'll never be able to look at any other game the same again. It is the standard on which all other games should be judged. You're either not as good as Chrono Trigger, or one of the two games that I like better than Chrono Trigger. But we'll get to those games later.